What if I told you I just built an exact clone of Shazam, a billion dollar music recognition app without writing a single line of code and not just a basic version. I'm talking about the full algorithm, all the features, even payment processing with Stripe to make money right away, all built by AI. This app is generating millions in revenue for the original company and I replicated their entire business model using just one AI tool that almost nobody is talking about yet. In this video, I'll walk you through exactly how I built this entire app from scratch. How the AI figured out the complex audio recognition algorithm on its own and how you can use the same approach to build your own apps without any coding skills. The no code revolution is here, but what I'm about to show you goes way beyond the typical no code tools you've seen before. This is the future of app development and after watching this video, you'll have the exact blueprint to build virtually any app you can imagine. I've been exploring the cutting edge of AI development tools for the past year. What I discovered with this particular tool completely changed how I think about building apps. So let's dive in and I'll show you how I built a Shazam clone that would normally require a team of engineers and millions in development costs all by myself using just one AI tool. We're starting off with something made for people who've never touched a single line of code. We're using a tool called Code Guide and it's going to do most of the important work for us. Basically, you just tell it what you want and it figures out how to make it happen in detail. The reason I use Code Guide is because they are asking a couple questions based on what you want to build and after that they are creating a full documentation that will make sure you can build exactly what you want with way less attempts compared to building it right away in an AI coding tool. For this build, we're going to recreate Shazam or at least a simplified version of it. The idea is to build an app that listens to music playing around you, captures a short clip and then figures out what song it is. Once it recognizes the track, it'll show the name, the artist and maybe even toss in some fun facts or achievements tied to the song. We're starting inside Code Guide. That's where we give the AI our big idea and let it shape the blueprint. So the first prompt we enter is, I want to build an app like Shazam, including their algorithm to match songs. Code Guide comes back with a few smart follow-ups to help flesh things out. It asks who we're building for. We keep it simple. Casual music lovers who just want to ID a song on the go. Nothing complex, no niche music theory needed. Next, it checks if we want to include extras beyond just recognition. So we throw in a few small but useful touches. A song history log, interesting trivia about each track and an option to share straight to Instagram or WhatsApp. Just enough to make the app feel personal. As for how the app listens in, we'll use the mic on whatever device someone's using, whether it's a phone or a browser. Browser. Code Guide handles that setup based on the platform. And since we don't have a song database off of our own, we ask for recommendations. Ideally something with a free API like ACR Cloud or Music Brains. The matching system, we want to follow Shazam's approach, which is audio fingerprinting using spectrogram peaks. If there's a shortcut using existing AI tools, we're all for it. Visually, we're keeping it clean. Code Guide asks about the design and will ask for modern and simple, rounded buttons, smooth animations, support for dark and light mode, and fonts like Inter or Poppins, purple, black, and white for the color palette. We are also going to mention that users should be able to create an account, mainly so they can save their song history across devices, but it's totally optional. And finally, let's tell Code Guide that we'll be using Replit as our main coding workspace. That's where the actual app will be built, tested, and launched. Once everything's filled in, Code Guide gets to work. It lays out the full structure, UI flow, core logic, API setup, and even sketches out what each screen should look like. We haven't written a single line of code, and already this thing is taking shape. Now that the blueprint is ready, it's time to move into Replit and bring the app to life. We've all been there. You're out at a cafe or scrolling through a reel, and the song plays that instantly catches your ear. You don't know the name, but you need to. That's the feeling we're trying to capture here. The whole point of this app is to take that moment and turn it into something instant and reliable. Tap a button and boom, you've got the song info. At this point, Code Guide has already mapped out the logic for audio recognition using fingerprinting. The idea is simple but powerful. The app listens through your mic, grabs a few seconds of audio and breaks it down into spectrogram peaks. That fingerprint gets sent to a song database, something like ACR Cloud, ODD, or Music Brains. And if there's a match, it brings back everything we need. Now we are going to bring that logic into 
replay it and start testing. First up, let's play Blinding Lights by The Weeknd and wait to see if it recognizes it. Nothing. No error message, no match, no reaction. The mic doesn't seem to be picking up or the fingerprint isn't processing right. Let's check what's going on and quickly spot the problem. We can observe here that the app doesn't capture audio properly in every browser. Fingerprinting takes too long and the API keys are failing silently in the background. Let's tell Replit. I don't think it is capturing audio properly and right away the AI gets to work. It adjusts how microphone permissions are requested, reconfigures how the audio context is set up and smooths out stream handling. With those changes live, we test again. This time we can now see results. The app listens, locks onto the track and it shows the song title, artist and full album art. We even get the release year and a fun little fact about the song's chart performance. Huge difference. The UI also reflects that recognition clearly cleanly, dark theme, rounded cards, smooth transitions. Now that it can identify songs, the next step is saving them. We want users to build a little music history inside the app. So we are going to ask the Replit agent, what is the use of the saved to library feature. You can see it explains how saved songs could be stored locally or tied to user account. Now we follow up. I could not save songs to the library. And the AI takes it from there, fixing the save logic, hooking up local storage and making sure songs actually stay in the library even after refreshing or closing the app. After one more test run, all checks out. You can save it, revisit it and everything flows just the way it should. Now that the app can recognize songs and save save them to a personal library, it's time to make things feel a bit smarter. We don't want users to just see what they've identified. We want the app to actually learn from their taste and recommend more of what they love. So we drop a prompt into Replit. The next feature is one where you can suggest songs based on the songs that are identified. So let's say I play a couple rap hit songs from the 80s. The suggested playlist will know what other rap hits from the 80s people are also listening to based on that they can put some songs into a suggested playlist. That sets the stage for the next big piece, which is a recommendation system. To pull it off, we use the genre tags, decades and BPM from each scanned track. Every time a song is identified, the app logs key metadata and then starts looking for patterns. If someone scans three or four old school hip hop tracks, the system figures out that they're into that vibe and suggests more songs in that lane. Once it's wired up, we are going to run a quick test. Let's try to identify a few early 2000s hip hop tracks. And within seconds, the app responds with a tight little list of similar songs, all from the same era, same energy. Now, one problem we hit early on, the app wasn't consistently saving history across sessions. If a user scanned a few tracks, closed the app and came back later, everything reset. So we needed to make that history stick. To fix it, we will link each user's recognition history directly to their profile in the database. That way, even if they log in from a different device or come back hours later, their scan history and personalized suggestions follow them. Once the backend update is in, we are going to test it again. This time, the playlist suggestions stay consistent. You scan a few songs, it gets the message and the recs update in real time. With recognition, saving and now smart suggestions all working together, the core experience is starting to come together. Let's see what else we can add from here. So far the app knows what song you're listening to and it's already learning what you like but now we want it to understand the vibe of each track, the emotion behind the sound. To get that started we are going to tell Replit the next feature is a mood based song classifier. After identifying a song, show its mood or energy level and then recommend similar songs based on mood. The goal is to automatically tag each identified track with a mood label like chill, energetic, romantic or melancholic. Replit handles this by pulling in extra metadata from the API, mainly the song's tempo, musical key and a bit of lyrical sentiment analysis and then uses that to make an educated guess. Once the mood is determined, it appears right below the song, these details in the app. From there, the app recommends other tracks with a similar emotion emotional tone. If a user scans something soft and mellow, it brings up more chilled out music. If it's an upbeat high energy track, it responds with similar fast paced song. Now to get everything working properly, let's make a few back end adjustments here to pull in that extra data 
and then update the UI so the mood text display cleanly without cluttering the interface. Let's also add a quick filter that lets users browse recommendations based specifically on mood. Once we put it all together, we can now run a few tests and here you can see that the results feel surprisingly accurate. The moods lined up, the suggestions made sense and the experience started feeling a lot more emotionally aware. Most people don't use just one device anymore. You might scan a song on your phone while you're out, then later want to revisit it on your laptop. That's why the next step is all about making sure everything stays connected, no matter where you log in. To make that happen, we set up a simple login system, just email and password. No social logins, no extra steps, just something lightweight that lets users save their history and pick up where they left off. Authentication is handled through Firebase. Once a user creates an account, they can scan songs, store them in their library and sync that data seamlessly across devices. We test the flow by signing up, scanning a track and then logging in from a second device. The song history loads instantly, no issues. On the back end, Firebase takes care of session tracking and data sync. Logged in users can access their full scan history, get mood and genre based recommendations and manage everything they've saved without losing progress. The login screen itself is minimal and clean. Email, password, smooth transitions and clear feedback. As you can see here, there's a couple of hiccups with session timeouts and failed logins, but a few quick prompts to replit can handle all of that. Now, user accounts are fully functional and they make the app feel like a real connected experience. At this point, the core app is working, but now we want to give power users a little more. Some people are going to want deeper features, more data and fewer limits. That's where premium comes in. To set it up, we give replit a clear instruction. Implement Stripe to provide a premium subscription to our users. That one prompt kicks off everything we need for monetization. The subscription model is simple. Free users can identify songs and use the core features. Premium users unlock unlimited recognitions per day, access to extended metadata like songwriter credits, label info and production details, and the early access to new features like offline mode or playlist export. Stripe handles all the billing, but expect that getting it running will take us a few extra steps. You can see here that the subscription confirmations are not syncing properly, webhooks are not always firing, and premium status does not carry over after checkout. To fix that, let's go back to Replit and ask for alternatives. Update webhook methods, better session syncing, and more reliable callback flow. After a few iterations, everything clicks. Stripe processes the payment, confirms the subscription, and instantly updates the user's account. A premium badge appears in the UI, and access to locked features is toggled on automatically. We test it by signing up for a plan, scanning a few tracks, and checking out the premium only features. The extra metadata loads instantly, the badge shows up, and the transition from free to premium feels sleek and responsive. Even though Replit made it easy to generate a working UI fast, getting everything to feel production ready took a lot of testing, debugging, and back and forth with the AI. Some of the biggest issues we ran earlier included audio capture, not working consistently across different devices, song recognition timing out, Stripe subscriptions not syncing properly across sessions, and layout bugs, especially on smaller mobile screens. Most of these were solved by simply rephrasing the way we asked for help. When something didn't work, we tried a different prompt or asked Replit to explore another method. For example, try a different approach to saving user history, improve responsiveness of the share buttons, rebuild Stripe integration with clear webhook validation. The trick is to stay clear and incremental. When the instructions are specific, Replit will handle most fixes with no problem. With every new version, we can use the same testing flow, scanning songs, checking how data is displayed, saving to the library, and making sure mood detection and recommendations are all lined up the way they should. It was a cycle of test, break, fix, repeat, and every time something does not work, we can just prompt Replit to either resolve it or roll back to the last working version. It will not be perfect on the first try, but with each iteration, the app becomes more stable, accurate, and ready for real use. Our app is now a fully featured clone of Shazam, built entirely through AI-assisted development. It handles audio fingerprinting, delivers mood-based and genre-driven song recommendations, lets users save their listening history, share tracks socially, and even upgrade to premium for deeper insights. Every feature was built step by step, just by asking the right question. Got feature ideas or questions about how we built it? 
drop them in the comments. I'm always checking and happy to dive deeper. Thanks for following along and I'll see you in the next one.